All right, so we are joined here from the ashes. We call us the Phoenix right now, dead and back once again to DCHL Outsider with our special guest with a face made for podcasting, DCHL's own Ben Berger. Thanks, Joe. How really you doing, Ben? Glad to be here. All right, so we are... Uh, I know you, you were probably one of the three people who actually listened to the podcast, so how, how have you been holding up with the, with the absence? I don't know. It's uh, been a real struggle, just you know, begging, checking the website every day. It's refreshing, 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 but we're back here, fresh and better than ever right now. Ben Berger, give us a quick little update of you know, who you are, give us an intro, give us the, the elevator speech of Ben Berger. Sure. Uh, I'm Ben Berger. I play for... Um, Goonies and DCHL and D3 um, on the floor, and then I play Wednesdays, uh, Herd of Turtles in goal, Rogue One Timers in goal, and Guardians on the floor. All right, so you do that. Um, what do you do in your spare time outside of uh, outside of hockey? Um, play play uh, like softball with friends. Uh, do it up. Play a lot of video games. Just... Right, what's your favorite video game? Um, well, my roommate just got the Nintendo Switch, so we've been playing Smash on there a lot. Okay, so you are from the Smash Brothers generation? Oh, for sure, yeah. And 64 was where I was started. Original out. Nintendo for you guys, right? Yeah. Anytime someone says like, original Nintendo for N64, I just I lose my mind. Lose it, you guys don't know what the original Nintendo is. So uh, how'd you get into league, Mr. Berger? Uh, so Aaron Brown and I, good friends from high school, as well as Alec Marks and Sam, but they didn't join it when we did. <laughs> uh, we were looking, we, we were both bo- home from college, living in... Uh, in the area, and we're looking for a sports league, uh, and we knew that they had soccer here, but they also had hockey here. It, we figured out, and uh, Suds uh, put us in a D four game just to try us out, and uh, we liked it, and signed up the next season for Crazy Eights Rec, and that's where the story began. Who was uh, who was on your first Crazy Eights team? Uh, well, Sal was the captain. Um, we had. Um, some really good players. I think Pete Lang was the goalie at that time. Pete Lang. Um, <clears throat> Emily Marshall was uh, one of the best rec players out there that season for sure. Um, Kyle, Josh, Frank, uh, Sarah Kelly. It was, it was a fun team. And then we uh, we got Sam to join about like five games in. Okay. Because uh, he had just finished school. He did an extra semester. Uh, and... Yeah, we won the championship that season. The next season, we went undefeated and won the championship again. And that was our first season also doing D4. So we kind of started out rec and then worked our way up the way it's supposed to go. Gradually, yeah, you know, it's, the last thing I do is just, just stay in the lower divisions way too long and, you know, linger. And it's like, yeah, you know, you probably don't belong in, in rec anymore and, and all that. I mean, so, it's fun to get better. It is fun to get better. You know, I agree on that. So... Beyond that, you know, you went from rack to D4. Now you're playing D3 Goonies. You're getting some sub reps in D1, D2 in net. So, you know, that's it's kind of what you, you want to see in terms of player progression right now. Um, what, um, as, a, as a former young gun, your, former and still young gun yourself, who are, the, um, who are some of the players you're, you're noticing in, like, the rack D4 division that you think uh, need to get a boost? Well, most of them are definitely newer players to the league. Okay. But, like, uh, I know uh, a couple players in the Sharks, like Sharon, Lindsay, and Anthony, are all fantastic players. They should be trying to go up to higher divisions. Sharon's, Sharon, Sharon is playing they, D2. Yeah, you know, they're doing that. And Anthony's doing draft, and, and Lindsay Amato, is doing draft as well. Anthony Amato was in draft right now. He's a big pickup for, yeah. uh, for the uh, Joel's team. Antifa? The, the Antifa team, which... Not a fan of a name like that because I don't want things to get political. It makes tweets and podcasts and all that stuff awkward. Oh, yeah. So boo to Sam Brinker, most likely? Uh, probably, probably. probably so. that's, that sounds Sam I don't know. Maybe Abdul created that somehow. You got to... Yeah, it could be Abdul. You can always blame him. You know? So let's talk about the elephant in the room, Ben Berger. Yeah. DCHL, DC Outlaws. Yeah, the Outlaws team. We're get, we're we're gonna get special guest Phil Glazier here. We had some scheduling things. Um, I'm not gonna ask for a huge recap of all this, but um, what is one thing that you've learned at tournament hockey, playing specifically for the Outlaws, that you've taken to DCHL that's helped you become a better player? Um, I think 
just being less impulsive and even like if it, the way I look at it is that even in, if a tournament uh, as a defender you have some time to work with you're going to have that here as long as you create t- space and like you have to like not just make that pass but look where that person's going to be able to move to like you have to think two steps ahead because if not you're going to make a turnover and in the higher divisions every team has people who will finish if you make mistakes so uh just lowering mistakes and then also having such a strong goalie behind me i think definitely helped me see what a uh, like top tier goalie should look like in zach okay zach tardy vote he's a star for the uh for the dc outlaws um so you are a member of hashtag gwendolyn nation yes you are a Gwendolonian. As I, I, I was going to point out, I coined that phrase, Gwendolonian. I'm, I'm sure you Gwendolin did. Gwendolonian Nation. I, I did all that. you got to give me some love here. Okay. For all, my, 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 for all the bad hashtags I put out there, I, I do one, one good one oh, every, they, every they, now and then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even a blind mouse gets the cheese here and there. Blind mouse gets the cheese. But, I mean, cheese tends to have a smell to it, especially if it's been sitting out. If, it's, if there's cheese that a mouse has access to... It's probably got a, a pretty strong pungent smell to it. So, I mean, you don't need to see it. You can just smell it. So, exactly. I, think that's, I think that's a bad analogy, Ben. I don't know. Okay. A broken, do you mean, do, clock, do you mean, do you a broken mean, clock works twice a day. I mean, there well, you go. Well, that, that's not necessarily correct either. Oh, my gosh. Because, you know, I mean, the, the clock could be lagging along by, say, a minute or two, and it might not, might not be there. These are some bad analogies, Ben Berger. Okay. Bad analogy, Ben, over here. Whew. So, what are your... The bad analogies aside, I've got to give you some. Okay. I got to give you crap every now and then. I've been called worse. You know, I, you know, so have I. I assure you. <laughs> so it happens when you uh, rep games. Um, but uh, so y- you play a lot of Gwendolyn hockey. Uh, this and that. There's a new Gwendolyn. Was it rec center out in Wheaton? Yeah, the Wheaton Rec Center. Um, I believe it's so. It's Thursday nights. Um, it's a huge gym. It's five v five there instead of four v four. Um, it's a bit of an upgrade. Yeah, it's a brand new complex. What's nice also is that, like, for people like me who don't live that close to like the Wheaton Silver Spring area, um, it's also like a library as well. So if you want to get there early, you can you know go upstairs on the Wi-Fi, do some work and stuff, and then uh, go down and play some hockey. So it's- thank you, Ben. I was. I was sure you were going to say, you know, go, you know, it's a library. So you go there, read a book. You're like, nope, go get on the Wi-Fi, do your thing. Well, I mean, uh, you got to do work. I have to do, I have wi I need Wi-Fi to do my work, so. So what was the last book you've read, Ben Berger? Um, last book I read was uh, the uh, biography of Dan Rooney. Of Dan Rooney. The, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers' former owner. Yes. All right. So about those uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, how you, uh. It's a it's a long season. It's it you know, feels like it's going to be a very well. At least there's 13 more games for the Steelers, and that's about it, most likely. You know, it's it's one of those things. You guys had a good run, not the greatest. You know, you you made your Super Bowlers. You you did your thing. You won a couple here and there. You know, you kind of overshadowed a little bit by the Patriots. That being said, though, you know, it's a good run, good teams, and you know, I mean, Big Big Ben still has two rings. You know, and it, it goes a long way. You know, your fan base fan base needs needs some wins here and there. And I know there's a couple of fan bases in the area, a little starved for uh, success. Oh in yeah, in particular. Yeah. <laughs> Redskins. Um, Coming from a Bills fan. Hey, you know, well, <laughs> Buffalo. You know, it's one of those things. I mean, you know, they, they made it to the, they made it to the game four four years in a row. They had they had some very good seasons, and you know. People who, who are like, oh, you know, they never won this and that. doesn't matter. Hey, they you were know? better than 30 teams four years in a row. I mean, there were... There, there were there Whatever, were, how many teams were. There were only 28... Uh, that, uh, All but one team. Yeah, you know, I mean, they, they had some amazing runs. And yes, it would have been great for them to win it. But when, when a team's winning like that, it just it feels good as a fan base. Buffalo Bills are 3-0 and right now, just, just saying. Oh, I, I, they're... Just, Josh Allen is the next coming. Until he's not. Until you, I mean, Josh starts. Allen was, Tyrod Taylor was, EJ Manuel was, um, Ronnie Fitzpatrick was, <laughs> you know, they, they all were. Um, but you know, let's not uh, let's not jump too much on football here, Ben. Um, who's your favorite hockey team? You're a, um, Cap, you're a Caps guy. I'm actually a Habs guy. My, Montreal Canadiens. So my mom's uh, family is, or her parents and her family is from Montreal, and. First sports poster I ever got was a Maurice Richard poster that my okay, that grandpa is, got me. See, that's solid right there. That's a good story. Keep it in my bedroom still. 
I hope the lip the lip area is not worn off, is it? No, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice <laughs> no, it's a framed poster and everything. It's it's a cool one, but uh, I mean, I support the Caps too. Um, it's always fun to see a DC team actually succeed. Yeah, you know, they had some uh, good years and bad years, and uh, they had one really good year. One really good year, you know. It's uh, all I had to do to win the Stanley Cup was beat an expansion team, and uh, and the Penguins. And the Penguins. That was a that was a crazy series. That was a. I I actually went. To, uh, for most of the Stanley Cup final games, I went with like uh, Aaron and Sam outside the stadium to watch it on like the jumbotron. Was that cool? It was so much fun. It, it was seems like, like it'd be really cool. It was like a just, and then uh, we went for the clinching game as well, and it turned into just like a riot, just mayhem, which was fun. It was definitely a lot of fun. All right, so we're gonna do some rapid fire questions here for Ben. Okay. All right, I'm going hard. First thing that comes in your head. And you, you've listened to the podcast before. You know you know the first question. Ben Berger, what's your favorite candy bar? Reese's. Reese's cups. Specifically the uh, eggs or the the uh, yeah the eggs. The eggs. That's a solid Reese's. Because I love the peanut butter dude, ratio. Dude, I'm I'm on board right now. Every Be- everything you answer from now on is downhill because you, you hit the peak right now. Becca Newman and I will we we pray about this kind there of might, stuff. There might there might be a picture of me with like cases of Reese's eggs on Facebook. Just saying. What's your favorite pizza topping? Um. Usually, like, just onions or green peppers, because I can't eat uh, any, like, sausage or anything. Why not? Keep kosher style. Kosher, okay. All right. Do your kosher thing right there. Um, When was the last time you've traveled not for a hockey tournament? Not for a hockey tournament. Uh, I went to Ocean City for Memorial Day weekend with some friends from college. Jesus Christ. Okay, when was the last time you didn't go to friggin' Ocean City or Feasterville? Thanks, Ben. Um, I, I can't. I can't. I, I, Wildwood. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I hate you. Um, yeah. You know, you, oh, actually, no, no, no. Uh, less than a month ago, I was in Chapel Hill visiting family. Okay, that's cool. Who are you visiting? Uh, my uncle, my cousin's bat mitzvah. Do you follow any uh, college sports at all? Like very religiously, yes. Okay, is he a Maryland guy? Yes, went to Maryland. Proud graduate. Okay. Dad and two brothers also. Got you. Um, what's your favorite sport outside of hockey to play? To play, to play. Uh, baseball. Baseball guy. Uh, what position would you play? Third base and pitcher. That's what I played for ten plus years. Okay. Uh, why third base? Um, I like the hot corner, and I always had a good enough arm to get it across. Okay. That is one of the furthest throws in baseball. Yeah. In the infield, third to first, the hot corner. Not just that, but you got to be really. As an outfielder, they can make the distance. But you got to be accurate. That's the key. Okay. Um, oof. Questions, questions. Who's your favorite Caps player? Favorite Caps player? Uh, probably Holpe, because I love goalies. Okay. They're crazy people. Who's your favorite DCHL player? If you if you could own a, a DCHL rookie card of any player in the league, who would it be? Oh, a rookie card. Wow. Uh, I mean, is this one of the things where you want a really old rookie card because then it's value? Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'd have to say uh, Nick Moser is probably my favorite player. Nick Moser rookie card. He's he's always he's always hurt, but uh, he's always hurt. <laughs> he's currently out for tonight's game because he's hurt. But uh, Moses is just one of my favorite players to play with, and that's fair. One of my least favorite to play against. Do we we talked about doing uh doing DCHL trading cards. Wouldn't that be so cool? Well, I I had like my old trading card from like when I did like middle school basketball, and like yeah. it'd be so much fun to do. I know it would be really cool. It'd be really. A lot of really sarcastic comments, and if you do it like Pokemon cards, where like everyone's got like health points and like powerful moves, like gotta catch them all. You gotta put like a like a like a Jake Ruby like snapshot up there at like a hundred health. No, point. no, it'll be, it'll be the hashtag Rubik's Cube. Oh, oh boy! Come on, man! Oh boy! Come on! Me. I've thought about this. It's also on the back of his jersey, so I'm, I'm not I'm not too weird. Oh wow! Okay, okay gotcha. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit here. I, I will never. Um, if you had a special move. What would it be? Like in hockey? Hockey special movie. If it, if you were if you were a Pokemon card, what would your special move be? Um uh, I'd say as a goalie it'd be like a glove save cuz I I I sometimes get the saves where I'm not expecting or like a flash the leather or something. I I I get a couple that like I have no like I no chance at getting. Like I did not even expect to, but it just kind of one of those things where you expect it to be in the back of the net, but you hear it 
But you like open your glove and it's there. Okay, so I'm just gonna say that's an awful answer. I, I, I got to dump on you. I've never played Pokemon book cards before, but I've seen them. So the special move has to be. It, it'll be called King Me. It'll cost three light energy. It'll be double your defense and block the next attack. Bam. You really thought about this. No, I just winged it in like the last eight seconds. Sure. Yes, Ben. Okay, I don't know that's if I, I believe I that. Come on, that's that's a good answer. King Me. Come on. Okay. The Burger King. Yeah. Your name's Burger. Or uh, fries with that, or something like that. Side of fries. That'll be your second move. Yes. Yeah, side of fries. It'll cost one. Um, it'll cost one fire energy, and it'll do like twenty damage. It'll be ten, it'll do ten damage for, and then it'll give a counter on it, and then each other one subsequent one does ten plus ten for each counter on it. Gotcha. Bam. God, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> you you got that. <laughs> I'm gonna play Pokemon cards. I got these awesome ideas. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Why do I talk? Precisely. Why do you listen? That's the real question. So, Ben, you got Ball Hogs subbing in net right now, coming up later tonight. And hopefully this podcast gets out in the next couple days. Um, who is the one player in the league you love playing with that's not Nick Mosier? That I love playing with? Oh, Aaron Brown. I Aaron love Brown? playing with Aaron because not only does he <laughs> score a lot, but like as a wing, like he's one of the best back-checking wings that I've played with. Aaron and I have like very good chemistry from playing together so long that like when I'm his defender or when I'm on D with him, I know like exactly where he wants me to like shoot the ball because since most of the time on the point if there's a lot of traffic or if there's a goalie that knows what's going on Mm -hmm. you try to you know hit your wing stick or your center stick rather than to shoot it into the goalie's chest who is one player you love playing against love playing against um hmm. i someone that i i use or it's a good question i love playing against sumit why is that um, because he's a very different player than me, uh, but like a very good player, and uh, he and like since he uh, when he started playing rec as well, like um, he's also someone who's like moved up a lot, and like I wouldn't say, I mean he's been playing hockey for a while, but like he's got better as well. Yeah, and it's good to like measure myself against people that I've been playing against for okay. a while. That's a good answer right there. All right, Ben, what do you um, one chance to get some shout outs? Um, before we cut this, because we got to get going. Um, Shout out, Ben Berg. Who do you got? Uh, let's see. All of the Gwendolyn crew. Okay. Um, and the Guardians, my probably favorite team. More uh, Gwendolyn people. The uh, well, Gwendolyn people and some others. Specific we... people, not 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 eighty percent of the league. Here. Okay, sorry. Um, Everyone who's ever picked up a right-handed hockey stick, shout-outs to you. All, all of the Guardians specifically. They're my favorite team. Okay. That's pretty pretty weak answer, Ben. I'm uh, sorry. We're going we're gonna to let, let the fans go disappointed at the uh, weak answer. I, I don't blame them. Give me one, come on, give me one person. Shout-out one person quick. Um, Nick Moser again. Jeez. Damn it. <laughs> Can you blame me? All right. I'm just going to give a random shout-out here to Sal, who refs, played goalie today. He does a good job. Yells a lot. My but first does a captain. Good job. Your first captain. Shout out to Sal. All right, so uh, shout out to everyone listening. Thanks for uh, the DCHL outsider support, and we'll be back. Oh, um, yeah, we'll be back. Uh, hopefully Don't forget next week. the Saturday tournament. Yeah, well, I'm gonna mention that in the in the game recap, Ben. Excuse that was my thought. me. That was my thought. Stepping over myself here, but all right, we're gonna get going. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you later. So much love to Ben Berger for doing that podcast. Very good to get uh, get an interview with him finally one on one. And yes, um, it has been a while since the last DCHL Outsider podcast. We had some, we had way too much to to go through. Um, I'll try to do a quick quick recap here. Um, MDHL last season's champions. This is Going back big time. TNT takes down the D1 championship. D2, Gwendolyn Guardians over Blade Runners in an exciting game. D3, Net Sticks and Chill getting their chill on. Rec Division, we had zero pucks given going back to back. Congratulations to them. DCHL Championships last season. The White Walkers reign supreme. No longer the White Walkers. The Goldsteins in the house. Whew. D2, Untouchables take home the championship. Um, yes, that happened. D3, Goonies go back-to-back. D4, First Ladies taking it down in the Rec Division Champions. Um, 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 
Oh my god, I can't remember who the Rock Division champions were. Wasn't the Sharks, wasn't the Pumpkins. Sinbin. Oh, it was Sinbin. Of course it was Sinbin. Um, they moved up to D4, so I did not see them in the Rec Division standings right now. Congratulations to the Sinbin. Okay, so that was all last season. Doing it up. Um, we're going to jump in. MDHL. We're going to do shout-outs galore here. Um, it's been a while. People deserve some love here. MDHL, drastic change. We had a Division One pause. Taking a little break from D1. And we are going to draft division here. This was really exciting. It was new. We didn't know kind of what we were doing. We were winging it. It turned out really well, though, so far. Um, shout out to the drafters, Joel Horde, Sumit, Kevin Foley, Boris, and Chris Thorpe here. After four games played, so each team ran through the other teams once, we have the Herd of Turtles. Boris's team, 3-0-1 right now. Got a stranglehold on first place. Uh, second place, Jester's Troop, 2-1-1. One, one. The Boogers, 2-2. Two, and two. Oh, not the best name. Antif and Carlos Cruz Experience um, tied for uh, fourth place. Um, but, you know, again, all it takes, uh, one team getting hot, and they'll be fine right now. Um, so my thoughts about draft so far, I think it's going really well as division. I think people are liking it. The ability to play with new players is awesome. And, you know, instead of playing with the same team over and over again, you're you're getting to see some interesting rosters here. Andrew Marshall playing, um, you know, on the same line, same team as Boris. You've got, you know, uh, Zach Buswell playing with Brennan. You've got Chris Thorpe playing with pretty much every player he plays with. Um, <laughs> Chris Thorpe drafted... Um, you know, a lot of players he's uh, he's very familiar with, uh, you know, Ortiz, Aaron. Um, you know, he, good team, good team. Not so much in terms of uh, trying some new players. Um, I'd say Greg Kessler, Toy, probably people you don't play with that often. Nick Mosier, but um, yeah, you know, uh, it's cool. It's definitely nice to see players playing with new players and shaking things up here. So that is where we're at right now. D2, this is a little topsy-turvy right here. Green Monkeys, 3-0 to start out the season. Looking utterly dominant right here. Um, yes, Green Monkeys right on top, number one. Gwendolyn Guardians, 2-1. Uh, second place, Blade Runners, third. Blue Steel, winless right now, but it's going to be a long season. You never know what's going to happen. Blue Steel, not worried. D3 division here. Um, all four teams came back. Uh, not too much in terms of roster. Well, some roster changes. Cluster Pucks find themselves... Um, well, this is a crazy... I mean, so there's definitely been a lot of buys here, so it's kind of hard to say. You know, where teams are at. Cluster Pucks looking good, 2-0. Um, you know, doing their thing. So that is solid. Rec Division, we got five teams. Frozen Chosen, Gwendolyn Black Knights, Puck Mafia, Zero Pucks giving Islanders. Four games in, Islanders... Um, first place again so far. So we'll see what happens, and we will see how uh, how these divisions shake out. So that is MDHL action. We got DCHL action as well. Um, I guess I can go through last week's games. Um, yeah, a little bit. We'll go. We'll go through. Uh, do we really want to? Um, by the time we get through the games and everyone listens to this, it'll already be another week. So we're gonna we're gonna skip that right now. Um, you know, screw it. Instead of um, instead of going through games, I'm gonna look at each individual team we've got right now and I'm give some shout outs to a couple of players on each team who've been been pretty impressive right now. So we're gonna start. Um, we'll, we'll go back to to MDHL Wednesdays here. Um, Herd of Turtles have definitely been seeing a lot of good good play. You know, they're number one. Had to sneeze there. Had to mute my mic. Thank you. Um, one of the, the big shocks on this team, not a shock, one of the uh, one of the surprises, um, Brendan McLaughlin, not a surprise. He's been playing above and beyond. Um, you know, very, very good player. Plays D3 on IPA. Don't really know kind of what, what to expect out of him. He is a very strong D1 player. And... Definitely tearing it up. You know, it's it's something that we're, you know, some people, myself, um, felt for a while, and I'm glad to see it happening. Um, they're also getting some uh, very solid uh, goaltending from Ben Berger here. Um, eight goals allowed in four games. 
um, 908 save percentage here. Been playing really strong in net for the uh, Herd of Turtles. Definitely uh, going a long way for them right now. Jester's Troop doing it up. Um, Jake Smith playing strong as always. Um, Alex Ortiz doing his thing. It's going to take forever doing every team. Um, I'm going to point out like just the 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 player that is playing really well and a player that no, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, Jesus, there's so many teams. Um, we're just going shout out. Screw it. I don't know. What, I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to review Sunday's games. I just I need to do it for a DCHL. Um, doing it up last Sunday's games. Clearly, clearly not not sure what the hell to do here. Um, Hockey Dead, Slashing Pumpkins. So right now, Slashing Pumpkins are looking really good in the rec division. Um, they're first place, 2-0, oh, and they got their one tie last Sunday playing the Hockey Dead. Um, Toby scored shorthanded for Hockey Dead. Not sure who he is, but he had a shorthanded goal, so he's probably pretty good. Plus, Slashing Pumpkins got a power play goal from Adam Healy, so he negates that shorthanded goal. Strange is it uh, first period, second period? So that's a interesting little uh, little hiccup there. Kyle scores for Hockey Dead, making it two one. But John is going to score with the extra attacker. Exciting, exciting, exciting to tie it up at two. Shoutouts galore there. Um, Midnight Riders playing the Gwendolyn Gladiators. Riders bringing it right now. They get goals from Allison Rap, the Raptor in the house, assisted, assisted by Jason Stitcher, assisted by Stitcher. Woof. Oh, that's gonna be a hashtag assisted by Stitcher. Woo! This is yeah. I'm <laughs> that's funny. Um, Dan's gonna score for Midnight Riders, and Kyle's gonna score again. Three nothing. Midnight Riders shut out by goalie sub one, aka Chris Zupa. For those in the know, Chris Zupa playing goalie now, getting a shutout win right now. He's doing a good job. Glad to see multi-talented gonna take his talents to the. Between the pipes. Um, all I'm going to say right now is I know I'm struggling a little bit here. Um, there was the first ladies tournament. We're going to get to that later on. I am major heat stroke, sunstroke. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a moron. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I understand that I'm struggling here, and that's all right. Um, IPA against high rollers. Okay, so high rollers took the jump. They went from rec. I mean, they went from D4 to D3. Um, not sure what, you know, they picked up Brian Billig again, regained him in D3, and, you know, I don't know what to expect from high rollers. Originally, I kind of felt like they may be a little overmatched, you know, D, the, the, the jump from D4 to D3 is the biggest jump you will take in DCHL. That, that's, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of D, D3 players who play D1. There are a lot of strong, strong teams been playing a long time, a lot of experience, a lot of chemistry. High rollers. Initially, I thought they might have been a little, little outmatched, but I, I saw them in their first game, played very well. Saw them in their second game, strong game. Third game for high rollers, playing IPA. Um, Josh is going to score for IPA, making it a one nothing. Justin Yarrow is going to make it two nothing. IPA high rollers play really well when they're down though. Brian Bowen's going to score, making it 2-1, but we got Curtis making it 3-1 for IPA. Drew Bender is going to score, making it 3-2, and it's going to get tied up by Chris Zupa on the power play, assisted by Sam Berkley and Carolyn Ellison, but AJ is going to stand tall, and he is going to make up for that contact from behind penalty, which gave them the power play for the high rollers. AJ is going to score from Curtis, making it 4-3 IPA. Um, not sure what to expect out of IPA. They're playing pretty strong this season. But um, high rollers are good. We're doing a little deep dive on the uh, on the high rollers here. Um, first game they played was All Blacks. They were down four nothing. Had an awful first period, awful start to the second. But you know it's it's faster. It's you know you got you got players like Mike Johnson just you coming down the middle on you. You know, Mike had a hat trick that game. Four four nothing. High rollers brought it back. It's three goals. Four three. They almost scored at the end. Strong game. High Rollers played against the Gwendolyn Arabian Knights here. Second game. Arabian Knights score first, but High Rollers respond, making it, you know, 1-1, um, you know, towards the end of the second right there. I mean, you know, High Rollers, um, 
getting off shot a little bit. Jason Stitch are making a lot of saves. Arabian Nights, you know, they they had a strong, you know, third period. But you know, that being said, High Rollers looking like they're they're not there yet. But I could see this team becoming a a very strong D three team. So. I'm just gonna break out the numbers. Um, Jason Stitch has faced a hundred and I he's faced a uh, hundred and six shots, which is the most in D3. Uh, Ninety-three saves, so he's doing pretty good right there. Um, of all players in all divisions, Stitch, uh, Jason Stitch is second um, in the league in shots faced over three games. So um, the first is Jeff for No Regretskis. Um, he has 111 to Stitch's 106. So Stitch is playing strong in that. He's definitely bringing his A game. I think the high rollers, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a, um, what do you call it, the bends when you, uh, you know, you move to a different atmosphere and decompression or compression. I don't know. Um, hopefully I'm right on this. Hopefully it sounds like really cool and correct and not like, hey, what's this moron talking about? So, High Rollers doing good. I'm a fan of the High Rollers hockey right now. I'm all on board. They're doing great. And I hope they are optimistic about this season and, you know, they move up to D3. Speaking of D3, we had Penalty Box Heroes against the All Blacks here. The Heroes jump out to an early lead as David scores. Not sure who David is. Might be a new player. Assisted from Anna and Derek O'Halloran, but all black to goals from Mike Johnson. Breakaway goal from Vic. Bill Nardi party in the house. And Jason Oliberti making it 4-1. Um, all blacks are 3-0 and this season. Looking strong. Penalty box heroes. 1-2. Playing some tight games. Kind of hard to tell what's going on this season. Um, roster's looking a little large. Not sure who's going to show up on any particular week. But Hero's got the talent, and uh, we'll see what happens. Crazy 8's against Flying Hellfish. Flying Hellfish, they lost in the finals to the First Ladies in an amazing overtime game. It was great. Hellfish just look so different right now. I, I don't know what it is. Something happened. The team is clicking. They are right now 2-0. They had a nice 6-2 win over the Crazy Eights. 41 shots on net, looking dominant. Um, I wish I could just point to one player who's who's really doing who's really doing it. Um, you know, Sepp is always playing great, kind of the leader of the team. You know, doing what he's doing usually. Um, in the early seasons, it was kind of like, you know, Sepp dot team, and you know, see where that takes you. But I mean, right now, I mean, Sepp zero goals, two assists. Um, which is, you know, it's good for a defender, but, um, you know, he's not going to have to do it all. Chad with a couple goals. Peter with a, Peter had a hat trick last, you know, one of the, one of the games last season looked dominant. Um, Chad looking good. Michael with a goal. Mihol with two. This Hellfish team looks very good. And if I'm in the D2 division, right now, they might be the team to beat. I mean, truth be told, they might be the, the favorites for going three games in. I, I think they would be my favorite, or two games in for them. Um, two and oh, they look outstanding. So we'll see what happens. I'm not going to crown them already. It's going to be a long season, playoffs. You never know what's going to happen. But, you know, they're probably the, uh, the odds on favorite right now. Stick Magnets against the Gwendolyn Blue Knights. Um, stick Magnets get. Okay, so Stick Magnus gets, you know, gets two goals from Derek O'Halloran. Holla, holla, Bills, y'all. One from Andrew Grant, one from Chris Bernetti, and one from Justin Yaros. Um, Stick Magnus 3-0, and looking strong this season as well. Um, yes, okay, we're going to talk about, um, we're just going to talk about, like, all of the things right now. Um, so one thing that the refs should be cracking down on more, and I believe will be happening is calling for the ball when the other team has it, banging your stick when the other team has it, trying to to get them to throw a pass. Um, it, it's it's unsportsmanlike conduct. It will be a penalty moving forward, and that's about it. Um, I mean, I understand you can do it. It probably has a you know n- negative connotations to it, but you know, I mean, if other leagues allow it, they allow it. Um, this is a rec league. You shouldn't be trying to kind of like angle shoot to get an advantage like that. Um, yeah, that's about it. You know, just just avoid doing it. It's unnecessary. 
Um, First Lady Sinbin, moving on to some more D4 action here. First Ladies, um, they brought it this game. Um, Sal was in net for the Sinbin. Sal played a strong game. You know, Sal looked uh, pretty good in net. Um, Casey had a hat trick. You know, it'll happen. Casey's a good player. Maya scored one. Sick goal. Emily Summers. <laughs> I swear, Emily Summers makes. She, you know, plays defense. She makes like one run every couple games. And when she does, she just stick handles through everyone. It is so fun to watch. Um, it's, it's really cool. When, when Emily Summers wants to, uh, to stick handle around people, she just does. She's definitely one of the best stick handlers in this league. And, uh, she had some, she had some sick moves. So shout outs to Emily Summers and, uh, first ladies for the win. Um, one, one and one right now. Shout outs to the first ladies tournament. We'll talk about that momentarily. We got Goonies Stingrays here. This is becoming like the, the D3 El Clasico right now. Stingrays um, jump out early. Goal from Kenny Alvarado. Goonies respond by Anthony Amato, Casey Hansen, and Ben Purse making a 3-1. Kenny's going to score again in the third to bring it. And um, 3-2. Goonies are going to hold strong right there. Stingrays unable to get the win. This was a huge game. First win for the Goonies with Ben Berger on the roster here. Um, ben had to put up two assists to, to take this game right there. Two secondary assists, lifting the whole team on his back to get this win. Ben Berger, um, special podcast guest. He was giving you some love earlier, giving him some love right now. Um, so, yeah, it was a big win for the Goonies here. I mean, one thing I will say about the Goonies, um, they do a really um, a, a decent job kind of rolling with the changes. Um you know, truth be told, the team was pretty loaded a couple seasons ago. Um, you know, pretty much with the same roster here and with Austin. And they've been, you know, making it work. Um, ben Purse, a little bit of a, a, a mouth on him. Likes to uh, run it a bit. But um, I think as a captain, he does a really good job. I think that he is very accommodating to the league. He's not too... He's not too complainy about the big picture stuff, you know. One on any particular call, he'll he'll uh, he'll talk your ear off. But um, Ben does a really good job, um, really good for the league. So uh, scoring some goals too. Truth be told, playing uh, playing some forward right there, center uh, playing center moves from D to center, doing a good job. Um, Goonies get their win. Stingrays two uh, two games in one and one. Uh, the D three division looking good. Truth be told, D three is looking really good right now. Um, I don't know why it has that like weird kind of aura to it, but um, we need to we need to change that. We need to get D three some more love. Um, we're going from D three right to D one here. D one action here. Lizards against Mercury Rising. This is your matinee game here. We had Manny uh, matinee is like early night. I think I might be wrong. It might be late night. Um, God, I gotta click, look it up now. Hope I'm, I, I keep using these words I don't necessarily know. Play, yeah, it takes place in the daytime ish. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you know, it's your D1 action midday. Good. See, I thought I knew these words. Um, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I don't know. I don't know why anyone listens. I really don't. Um, even I don't listen. So, um, Manny from Brittany Thorpe and Sumit. Alex Schutz from Brennan and Diane. Brennan from Alex Schutz and Patrick Noyes, 3-0 Lizards. This is a uh, is a good win for them. Lizards, a sh- little bit of a strange season so far. Um, <sighs> Lizards had that crazy, crazy. Okay, so Lizards first game, first game of the season lost to the Redcoats 5-0. It was a weird game. First game of the season, you don't know what to expect. Week two they play Puck Buddies in. It's a 10-6 game. That's insane for D1. It was. It was just nuts. There was goals galore. It was weird. And uh, in 3 nothing against Mercury Rising with the win right now. So, I, I don't know what to say about the Lizards. It's, I don't know what to expect. The team is very good on paper. Um, Mike K dropped 28 save shutout. Um, it just depends on, on any particular game. Just, you know, maybe things are clicking, maybe things aren't. Um, last season, they were very strong. I think they finished as a two seed. Um, it's kind of it's hard to predict. It's just they're they're, they're very unpredictable. Um, very uh, when when they're on they're they're ferocious though. Um, 
going to D2. Speaking of El Clasico here, we had this is the original Funk Masters against Untouchables here. Um, Untouchables are they're a different team. Like let's be honest. Um, three games in, they only have 12 goals scored. They have nine against, which is nine against, which is really low, and 12-4, which is really low. This team's playing a little bit more defense. Um, they are okay. So. Tam for Untouchables is outstanding. She has been she has been ferocious here. Um, only seven goals allowed. Her save percentage is one of the highest in the league right now. Um, oh god, it's so we're, we're like three games in, so it's kind of hard to see it all. But um, yeah, nine uh, nine two save percentage. That has her one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has her eighth in the league right now, but there's a couple people who've only played one game, and you know it's it's tricky. She's making a lot of saves. She is playing very very good, and she definitely deserves a lot of credit here for uh, keeping the untouchables in these games. <coughs> but this game, um, you know, crazy 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 game. It was John Gramlich, then um, Joe Shea. Making it two untouchables. Nate Berryman and Barry Moore. Barry Moore goals. Too easy. Um, yes. For a funk. <laughs> uh, him and then Keith making it 2-2. Gramlich makes it 3-2 untouchables. Keith makes it 3-3. Gramlich makes it 4-3. Jamie Brennan. Sick handles from the corner. Making it 4-4. Um, in the final minute, though, untouchables are going to get a high stick call on Carlos. Six seconds left in the game. Keith Ingram is going to score on the power play. Amazing game. Instant classic. Um, Jesus. Funk took 49 shots. Tam stopped 44. John Rouse playing for Funk um, in the sub action for Eric Tavern was out for the week. Um, 35 saves on 39 shots. This great game. I mean, this is this is untouchables. Funk Masters at its finest. Hype train is left the station. We have Goldstein's puck buddies here. Um, Goldstein's get goals from Jamie Brennan, Julie Sullivan, Boris, making it three nothing. Um, John Grimes is going to score for puck buddies, making it three one. Um, puck buddies look good. Didn't have Jake. You know it's going to happen. Um, but Goldstein's look good. Their passing was outstanding. As a spectator, it was unbelievable. So. Julie's been playing really good lately. Julie Sullivan does a lot of shout-outs here. Um, yeah, Julie's playing really good. She scored a game winner, I believe, in the championship against Puck Buddy. Scored another one here. Um, yeah, Julie is definitely... She's definitely playing... A, I don't want to say a lot. You know, she's playing better than before. Julie's playing really good. Um, so, here's a random fact for you. I, you know, I had a hunch... But uh, good thing I followed up on it right now. Um, wow, that's crazy. Um, so, Julie Sullivan in three games has three goals, one in each game. She is currently leading the Goldsteins in goals and points. So, uh, again, only three games in. But if you're getting if you're getting production like that in D1, out of any player, you got to be happy. I mean, a goal a game is outstanding. Um, just for reference here, we're gonna we're gonna give you some stats right now in terms of D1 players. That can't be right. Um, I don't know, maybe it is. Uh, probably current season. That is our current season. Never mind. Um, so last season, in the regular season, we had how many people in D1 scoring more than one goal a game? One, two, three, four players had uh, four players had ten goals or more. So keep that in mind. I mean, you know, uh, Jamie Brennan, eight games, eight goals. Daniel Rubrik, four games, seven goals. That's an amazing number. Um, you know, so there were some players who averaged a little bit more than a goal a game, but... Um, you know, not that many, and uh, Julie's on pace, so fingers crossed that she keeps it up and uh, does it up. 
Um, Puck University against Redcoats here. Puck U, new look team. Last few seasons have been strange for them, losing some players, picking some new ones up. This team in in D1 is morphing more than um, more than any other team. Um, lost Josh Lerner. Jason Maxstein still on IR. Um, John Kraus, I don't know if he's a sub or, or where he's at right now. But um, new additions, Taylor Stedman. New additions, Zach Buswell, Steve Buswell, um, Matt Kowalski here. Um, Kevin Perlow, Josh Bush. This this team is changing a lot. It's a good thing. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with Puck University. Um, doing her thing. So, Puck University Redcoats. Um, game started out. Uh, Joe Shea breakaway goal um, for Redcoats off a, a line change that uh, might have been a little too eager. Um, Redcoat's going to get a second goal from Aaron Brown, getting some sub action from Brett Snyder and Adam Zimmerman. But Sean Miller's going to do some Sean Miller things and score one goal and then score a second goal. 2-2. Um, Joe Shea is going to get another breakaway and score for Redcoat's, making it 3-2. Um, Redcoat's win. Redcoat's 3-0 and to start the season. This might be the first time. I believe this is the first time ever Redcoat's are 3-0. and And the crowd goes wild. Um, so that's a... It's good to see a team like the Redcoats, who were the you know one of the the last uh, lastly formed teams, um, definitely improving, growing the roster, seeing a lot of players on Redcoats grow. Amit has definitely grown significantly since he joined the team. Austin Henley, significant you know he's he's become a superstar not only in his own mind but in the minds of many many others. Uh, <laughs> There was no reason to say it that way, but I thought it was really funny. Um, Brett Snyder's gotten so much better. This, this team has definitely improved, and you know it's going to be interesting to see where this team goes. Last game of the night, Ball Hogs against No Regretskis here. Um, this was a game, Andrew Marshall with the hat trick for No Regretskis. Um Ball Hogs, you know, so it's a late game, a little shorthanded, and that will happen. Um, you know, late games are a little bit tricky for players, but, you know, they do what they can. Um, Aaron Brown's going to score. It's uh, Andrew Marshall and Aaron Brown. Andrew Marshall again. Chris Zupa, um, we had one more goal for Noah Gretzky's. I believe it was Nate. No, um, it was an e sub male. Um, I forget who it was. Sorry. Um, and the last goal, empty net, Andrew Marshall. Um, it was a 5-1 game, but there were two empty netters, so it was like a, more of like a 3-1 game, and that's fine. Um, so that's a quick little recap right there. I've been excited, dying to talk about the First Ladies Germantown Super Hockey um, Extravaganza. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, it was awesome. Thank you to everyone who showed up. We had four teams, 48 players, I believe, 44? 44, 10 in a goalie. Yeah, 10 times 4, 44. Um, 10 times 440, 10 players, and the extra 4 for the goalie. Um, the math was correct, I just didn't say it properly. Um, thank you to everyone who showed up, it was awesome. It was a great tournament, the rink is really cool. Um, it's good, it's it's a nice sport court, had a good feel to it. Um, it was sunny out there. Um, whew, I got burned, big time. Um... SPF 50 doesn't do crap. Thank you. Shout out to Patrick Noyes for helping me use some sunscreen. It was awesome. Just I'd burn regardless though. Um, so great tournament. Team White is going to get the, the win over Team Green in a shootout here. Rachel comes up huge to score the game winner. Um, show shout outs to everyone who joined, everyone who supported First Ladies, came out, had fun. It was great to see so many people. Um, the new rink is awesome. I think it's going to be a huge, huge asset for the league moving forward. Ideally, I believe that first ladies will be running practices there, so it might be um, might behoove them to um, make them open and get more women out there to help grow grow ball hockey, grow the skills con- you know the skills of the the players, um, and build more community because that's really what you know this is all about. Um, it was really fun seeing people there and, and doing it all and having fun and some kids running around and oh my gosh the real MVP most valuable puppy 
is going to go to Turbo, the new puppy for Maddie Vale and Adam Gehring. Oh my god, it's adorable. We're going to get some pictures of that. Oh my god, the thing is so cute. Um, yes, most valuable puppy award. Um, the people did well, but the, that cute little dog was the star of the show in my book anyway. So, um, yes, that's about it. We are going to hopefully get this podcast back up and running every week, and we will um, we will give... Uh, yeah, guys, give some more shout-outs, give some love to players, give the updates, the recaps, and more importantly, the interviews. Um, this was awesome. Um, I know I was definitely out of form, assuming my form was, I mean, probably bad to begin with, but um, struggled a little bit, stammered a little bit, did did what I could. Um, so thank you to Ben Berger for doing a great job with the interview, get to know him a little bit better. Um, thanks to everyone who came out to the tournament. Thanks to everyone who listens, supports the league, plays, has a good time, tells their friends. And um, thank you for listening. And we will uh, 